Hey guys and welcome to my quick build guide for the power alacrity mechanist. In this guide I'm going to cover why you should play this build. I'm going to cover the gear with two different variants. I'm going to cover the skills you can take as well as the traits. And then lastly I will very quickly touch on the rotation and show a simplified version. But also I will link my full rotation video in the description where there's a ton of extra info in that video's description on how you can change the rotation to your liking. Now let's get started with why you should play this build. The Power Alak Mechanist is a very simple build that has very reasonable damage while providing a ton of group support. It can bring anything ranging from 20 to 25k DPS with the lower end already being reached by just auto attacking on mace. It can offer permanent alacrity and 25 stacks of might after the initial ramp up for your subgroup as well as around 80% fury. If you press your mace too off cooldown in the rotation, you will also get around 75% vigor and regeneration uptime. And then lastly, you will get 30% protection uptime. You also get one long lasting stack of stability once every 24 seconds. You will not be able to delay this since the skill that grants it will also give alacrity and is therefore used off cooldown. However, this long lasting stack of stability can be nice because it lingers on your group on encounters where you just randomly get CC'd every now and then. Now let's look at the gear. In terms of basics, we want to reach at least 45% boon duration to cover alacrity for our subgroup. On top of that, we will use the superior rune of the strength so that we gain 50% extra might duration. This puts us to close to 100% might duration, which helps us upkeep 25 might after the initial ramp up. Now there's two main variants of this build. You can either use a concentration sigil with less diviner pieces or you can use a setup with impact or air sigil and more diviner pieces. When you use the impact or air sigil variant, keep in mind that the air sigil will not be good on every boss since you can waste the active proc on adds. Now after we reach the necessary boon duration with the diviner pieces, the rest will just be filled with berserker and ideally either a few assassin pieces or some precision infusions to crit cap. Now the build that I am running here is the variant with the superior sigil of impact and it is optimized around not having to use any precision infusions so I can just use my power infusions. I will link both of these builds in the description, the concentration and the impact variant. However, I will still quickly show you the variant that I am running right now. I have my Assassin Helmet, Assassin Shoulders, Diviner Chest, Berserker Gloves, Diviner Pants, as well as Berserker Boots, obviously, like I said, with the superior rune of strength in all of them. And then I am running Mace Pistol with Force and Impact Sigil, both Berserker pieces. And then all my trinkets are Diviner, except for my second ring, which is Assassin. Now speaking of the weapons, as you can see, as I said, I will run Mace Pistol as a default setup. However, you can swap to a shield instead of the pistol, which will grant you some extra CC and a general block skill. And it will only be around a 1k DPS loss. If you're ever not in charge of might, you could in theory swap out the strength runes for scholar runes. However, this is a very minor DPS increase. It will only gain you around 1k. So I would recommend to just stick to the strength runes just in case your other might source either messes up the rotation or dies within the fight. All of these builds assume that you have spotter in order to reach crit cap. If this is not the case, you can simply take the precision ferocity food, curry butternut, instead of the uh, normal food that you would run, the bowl of sweet and spicy butternut squash soup. Or you can swap your gear entirely to a setup with accuracy sigil. Next up, let's look at our skills. First of all, as a heal skill, we will take the Rectifier Signet by default. This will passively heal us and our mech and can actively be used to save either us or our mech with a bigger heal. Another great option is AED whenever we can use it to save us from a one-shot mechanic, such as Cardinal Severe Shockwave and Wing 7. Alternatively, we can also use Healing Turret for some group Condi Cleanse. For the utility skills, the first one we're going to take is Grenade Kit. It offers a great damage skill on a low cooldown with the Shrapnel Grenade. However, Grenade 4 and 5 are good damage as well. 
If you want to play the more lazy auto attack only variant, you can swap this out for any utility your group might need. Popular choices would include either the barrier signet, which grants this projectile reflecting dome around your mech, or you can run the personal battering ram for some extra CC. Next up, we will use force signet, which will passively increase our strike damage. It can also be used actively for CC at the cost of losing the 10% damage buff while it is recharging. And then the last utility skill is Shift Signet. This will passively copy all boons we get onto our mech and therefore make it hit harder. And then the active is a stun break and shadow step that can be used to either play around mechanics or reposition our mech if we need to. Lastly for the elite skills there are two choices. The overclock signet reduces recharge on all other signets while the active ability would mainly be used if our mech dies so we can resummon it without the cooldown, since losing our mech would mean that we lose most of our boons. The skill is very useful if you think you will need to use some of the other signets and want a lower recharge on them, or if you think your mech might die in the fight. The alternative to the overclock signet would be the mortar kit, which offers a decent skill on the number 2 which we can use to fill in gaps in the rotation. Next up we'll have a look at our traits. We are taking Explosives, Firearms and Mechanist. In Explosives we are running the standard Power DPS Engineer traits, taking everything we can that increases our DPS. We are using Glass Cannon which increases our damage while we are above 75% health. Explosive Temper grants us a nice stacking ferocity buff when we hit the enemy with explosions. And Big Boomer will make us deal increased strike damage when we are at higher health than the enemy. It will also grant us some nice passive sustain after we use an explosion. Now in firearms, once again, we are just running the standard power DPS engineer traits. We have high caliber, which will increase our crit chance while we are within the range threshold of the enemy. We have no scope, increasing our ferocity by 150 while we have fury. And lastly, modified ammunition makes us deal increased strike damage for each unique condition on a foe. This also means if you are testing this build on the golem, make sure to only put the 10 realistic conditions on the golem. If you put all 13 on, you will get slightly higher results. The most notable swap in terms of traits you can make here is swapping out no scope for pinpoint distribution. This will give up some of the personal ferocity to boost the DPS of our Condi DPS players, since it grants 100 condition damage to our subgroup. This is definitely worth if you have at least two condition DPS classes in your subgroup. Now lastly, in the mechanist trait lines, we pick all the middle traits. This is the default support line. In general, this grants our mech supportive skills that help us keep up boons, and it makes its auto attack grant might as well as pulse barrier and alacrity in combat. Each of the major traits changes one of our F skills and gives our mech another bonus. I will quickly go and talk about the bonuses first, and then we can look at our skills. For the mech arms, high impact drivers, it just makes our mech grant might to allies when it attacks. Then for the minor trait mech fighter, it makes our mech do an attack whenever we cast our maze 3. Be careful to not interrupt your F skills while they are channeling when using maze 3. You will also be locked out of using other mech abilities until this attack is done, which takes around 1-2 to two seconds after using the maze 3. Next up we have mech frame channeling conduits, which makes us and our mech grant alacrity whenever we grant barrier. This has a 1 second internal cooldown, which is shared between you and your mech. It also makes our mech inherit all of our boon duration, instead of just the standard 50%. The next trait just offers some nice defense for our mech, should it ever take too much damage, however it is not very important otherwise. And then lastly we have mech core barrier engine, which makes our mech pulse barrier in combat and therefore also alacrity due to the channeling conduits trait. Now let's look at the skills we get from these major traits. First of all, our mech's F1 skill will make our mech dash at the enemy and deal some damage. This will be our lowest priority skill in general since it just does damage and no boons. Our F2 skill grants some useful boons, most importantly alacrity and some protection. The Aegis and stability can come in handy too but this will be our highest priority skill and we will definitely not want to delay it ever, so we will not use it just for the ages and stability. This is also an instant cast skill for our mech, 
However, be careful because it still can interrupt your F3 skill if you press F2 while that is channeling. Now I'll quickly close the trade window to show you the F3 because our F3 skill pulses barrier and therefore also alacrity as well as some might and fury around our mech making this our second highest priority mech skill after the F2. If I press the skill you will see our mech goes into this state here and just pulls barrier and the aforementioned boons. Now this is the main skill that we want to make sure to never cancel. Like I said you can cancel this accidentally by pressing any other F ability or by using your maze 3 since it will cause the mech to do the other attack because of the minor trait mech fighter. Now lastly I will quickly touch on the rotational. The rotational is split into parts which is our mech and our personal skills. Our mech skills cast separate from our own skills so we want to make sure to use them whenever they are up. At the start of the fight we want to use our F2 and then our F3 to build up alacrity and might. After this is done channeling we can also use our F1 and then as soon as they come back off cooldown we want to prioritize them in that exact order of F2 over F3 over F1. So I will quickly press F2 then F3 for the channel and once it is done I will use my F1 again. Now keep in mind that your mech skills can interrupt each other and your mech also locks itself into an animation after you use your maze 3. So make absolutely sure that you do not cancel the F3 channel with another F skill or your maze 3. I will quickly demonstrate the animation locking with the maze 3. I'm going to press my maze 3 and then I'm going to spam my F1 skill and you will see how long it takes to, uh, to start activating. So I'll use maze 3 here then I press F1 and now it casts the DF1. Now in order to show the rotation of the personal skills, I quickly recalled my mech. With only maze auto attacks, you can already do around 20 to 21k DPS on the golem with realistic settings if you have your mech out. This will increase by another approximately 1k or so as your mech gets quickness through the shift signet in an actual fight. Adding in more skills will of course add more DPS, which will cap out at around 25 to 26 k DPS with the full rotation. Now a very basic loop you can follow to do very reasonable DPS is you will use your maze 2, then your grenade 2, one filler skill, and then two auto attack chains and repeat. If you don't want to think about it too much, you can just alternate between pistol 4 and maze 3 as a filler skill. So I'm going to use Maze 2, Grenade 2, Pistol 4, and now it will be two auto attack chains. Maze 2, Grenade 2, Maze 3, two more auto attack chains. And after that we can repeat from the start since our Pistol 4 is back up. Alternatively, if you want to add in more skills, feel free to check out the rotation video that I will link and the description of that video where I show way more options on how to do this rotation with different skills, for example incorporating mortar kit, incorporating other grenade skills, or of course if you just swap out the pistol for a shield. And this is it for my build guide for the power alacrity mechanist. Thank you very much for watching and if you have any questions feel free to let me know and see you in the next video.